This is the Kennedy Class 1, cast number 1, that is available at the dispensary window if you are doing the RPD seminar. The, it is a Kennedy Class 1 because we have bilateral edentulous areas posterior to the remaining natural teeth. That's the definition of the Kennedy Class 1. With our Kennedy Class 1, we have a fulcrum line that comes across like this and on the Kennedy class 1 we are going to clasp the two teeth that are next to the edentulous areas and so we will be doing a canine on one side and a first premolar on the other side. There will usually be only two clasps on the Kennedy class 1. On this particular side we have a canine and we have to decide what type of a clasp we're going to use on it and in just looking at this or at this tooth it has an extremely bulbous surface on this side and it has a lot of undercut in this area we won't be thinking of an eye bar on this tooth I don't believe because a lot of times the canine is precluded from use of the eye bar by virtue of the fact that the undercuts on the canines are often severe and that rules them out because that bar clasp would have to stick out so far away from our tissues that it will be very irritating to the uh, mucosa of the cheek. So on this one we're more than likely going to be thinking about the option of a wrought wire into a 0.02 mesiofacial undercut because we looks like we probably probably have that or a 0.01 cast round clasp on this particular tooth if we have undercuts here we have to rule out all of our bar clasp period if we can't use an eye bar we can't use any of the bars our other choice would be what if we wanted to come back this way and grab a distal facial undercut which I'm not sure is there but I do want to point out that we don't use that reverse circlet clasp on the uh, canines or even the premolars on a maxillary arch because you would have this arm coming down in this direction and it would be quite unesthetic. On the other tooth our ideal clasp of choice is the eye bar with a mesial rest now it has to have these components mesial rest distal guide plate cast eye bar to the mid facial 0.01 undercut what else could we use on this particular tooth we can use the wrought wire clasp if we have a 0.02 mesial facial undercut so we can use wrought wire clasp I bar which is our clasp of choice on an extension base because of its kindness to that tooth from a tor torquing standpoint. If we have a distal facial undercut we could use the reverse circlet clasp coming to the distal facial undercut but there again that clasp would not be very attractive as it would originate from the occlusal come down here and a lot of the clasp arm would show in that location. If we have a, um, an undercut of 0.01 we might consider a modified T-bar clasp if we have a 0.01 distofacial undercut and um, the eye bar and that, that about does it for our choices on the premolar. Our fulcrum line crosses across here and we have to consider one other thing when we have an extension base removable partial denture we have a fulcrum line that we're going to drop a perpendicular to and wherever this points that is the farthest point away from this fulcrum line on which we would place an indirect retainer. On the maxillary arch we can place an indirect retainer on our central incisors not usually on our lateral incisors. On the mandibular we do not put a clasp on mandibular anterior uh, centrals or lateral incisors. So we might be considering an indirect retainer right here to prevent lifting of this back end under sticky foods. That indirect retainer right there would counteract the lifting of the back end up. 
We also have a palatal torus right here, back here. It's not extremely prominent, but the skin over that torus is very thin, so we're going to probably be doing a major connector that will avoid that maxillary torus and that strong median palatal suture, so we're more apt to do something called a horseshoe-shaped major connector or a U-shaped major connector, depending on your textbook. As far as a major connector is concerned, we would be plating all these anterior teeth with a major connector. And what we do with our abutment teeth, I don't think there's any choice here. We're going to be putting a cingulum rest on a canine and then plating that tooth. But on this tooth, depending on what clasping system we use, each one calls for their individual best choice of lingual treatment, meaning dipping down or plating or what have you. So it'll depend on where we find our undercut and which we decide to use on that tooth. And then we're going to plate because we have to get up to this indirect retainer, so why not just plate all of these teeth in order to have a major connector that would more than likely be um, a horseshoe-shaped major connector because we're going to have to avoid that uh, torus. And once we do that, really, there's not much of a chance that we're going to be able to put a hole in there, I don't believe, um, to do an anterior posterior palatal strap because we cannot take that strap across that torus as the skin's very thin. This goes down that metal across that torus with very thin tissues above it would keep it chronically sore. So we will avoid our, major, our uh, torus either with a horseshoe or... Um, we'll do basically a big old palatal plate covering most of the maxillary palate. Um, rest, we're going to have a cingulum rest here. Don't think there's much of a choice. We're going to have a cingulum rest for our indirect retainer on the canine. And then on this tooth, it will depend. If we do a wrought wire clasp, we'd have a distal rest and plating. If we do an eye bar, we will have a mesial rest, distal guide plate, dip on the lingual, and put an eye bar on the facial. Let's see what we have on the surveyor.